Reading of St. Paul's Letter to the Ephesians Brethren, if you only knew the grace that God gave me to carry out his plan concerning you, how, by revelation, I became aware of the mystery, as I quickly outlined it. By reading me, you can know the perception I have of the mystery of Christ. God did not make this mystery known to men of past generations, but he has now revealed it, by the Spirit, to his holy apostles and prophets. The pagans are admitted to the same inheritance, they are members of the body, they are associated with the same promise in Jesus Christ, through the gospel. Of this I was made a minister by the gift of grace that God granted me in the exercise of his power. I, who am the last of all saints, received this grace to announce to the pagans the unfathomable riches of Christ and to show everyone how God fulfills the mystery always hidden in him, the creator of the universe. Thus, from now on, the authorities and powers in the heavens know, thanks to the church, the manifold wisdom of God, in accordance with the eternal plan that he executed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Christ we have, through faith in him, the freedom to approach God with complete confidence. Word of the Lord. Thank God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure. If the owner of the house had known when the thief would arrive, he would not have let him break into his house. You too, be prepared, because the Son of Man will arrive at the right time, when you least expect it. Then Peter said, Lord, do you tell this parable to us or to everyone? And the Lord replied, Who is the faithful and prudent administrator that you will put in charge of the staff of your house to give food to everyone at the right time? Happy is the employee that the boss, when he arrives, finds acting like this. Truly, I tell you, the master will entrust him with the administration of all his property. However, if that employee thinks, my master is delaying, and begins to beat the servants and the maids, and to eat, drink, and get drunk. If the master of that employee arrives on an unexpected day and at an unforeseen hour, he will split him in half and make him share in the fate of the infidels. That employee who, knowing the master's will, prepared nothing, nor acted according to his will, will be. Whipped many times, however, the employee who did not know this will and did things that deserve punishment will be whipped few times. To whom much has been given, much will be asked of him. Word of Salvation. Glory to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Think for a moment about a great hidden treasure. Not an ordinary treasure of gold or jewels, but a treasure so valuable that its discovery has the power to transform not just your life, but the lives of all humanity. This is precisely the kind of treasure that St. Paul presents to us in his letter to the Ephesians today, the mystery of Christ. To me, the least of all saints, writes Paul with profound humility, was given this grace to proclaim to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. What an extraordinary revelation! Paul, who previously persecuted the church, now sees himself as the bearer of a divine mystery that had been hidden for generations. But what is this mystery? It is the revolutionary truth that in Christ, through the gospel, the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partakers of the promise. To understand the impact of this revelation, we need to place ourselves in the historical context. For centuries, a seemingly insurmountable barrier existed between Jews and Gentiles. It was a division not just religious, but cultural, social, and political. 
And now, through Christ, that barrier has been broken down. God's plan, hidden for ages, finally reveals itself. All people, all nations, are called to be part of God's family. There are no more us and them, just one body in Christ. This revelation takes us directly to today's Gospel, where Jesus confronts us with a parable about responsibility and fidelity. Who is the faithful and wise administrator that you will set over all the people in your household? Note the connection. Just as Paul was made a steward of the mystery of Christ, each of us is called to be a faithful steward of the gifts and truth we have received. We do not own the treasure. We are guardians, administrators. Jesus continues with a solemn warning. If that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his servants and maids, to eat and drink and to get drunk, that servant's master will arrive in a hurry, unexpected day and at an unexpected time. This passage makes us reflect. How are we managing the treasure of the gospel entrusted to us? Are we living as if the Lord's return is imminent, or have we settled into a routine of spiritual indifference? Paul tells us that through Christ, we have free access to God with confidence through faith in Him. What an extraordinary privilege! But with this privilege comes great responsibility. We are called not only to keep this treasure for ourselves, but to share it with others. Think about the words of Jesus, to whom much has been given, much will be asked. From whom much has been entrusted, much more will be required. What a challenge! Each of us has been given unique gifts, specific talents, particular opportunities. The question is not how much we receive, but how we are using what has been entrusted to us. Imagine a butler who, in charge of distributing food to other servants, keeps everything for himself. Not only is he failing in his responsibility, but he is actively harming those who depend on him. Likewise, when we keep to ourselves the unsearchable riches of Christ, we are depriving others of the treasure that could transform their lives. Paul tells us that this mystery was revealed, so that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God might become known. The church, that means each of us, is God's chosen instrument to reveal His wisdom to the world. What an incredible responsibility! But how do we live this responsibility on a daily basis? How are we faithful stewards of the mystery of Christ? First, we must keep alive our own awareness of the Lord's presence. Like the servant in the parable, we may be tempted to think that the Lord is delaying. But every day is an opportunity to encounter Christ. Every moment is a chance to be faithful in our stewardship. Second, we must recognize that the grace we receive is not for our exclusive benefit. Like Paul, we are called to be channels of God's grace to others. This may mean sharing our faith through words, but more often it means living it through actions of love, compassion, and service. Third, we must cultivate a sense of urgency in our mission. We do not know the day or hour when the Lord will return. Every encounter, every interaction, may be our last opportunity to be faithful to our calling. Fourth, we must exercise our stewardship with humility. Paul describes himself as the least of all saints. His greatness comes not from his own qualities, but from the grace of God working through him. Likewise, our effectiveness as stewards of the mystery of Christ depends not on our own abilities, but on our willingness to be instruments in the hands of God. Finally, we must keep our eyes fixed on the hope we have in Christ. Paul speaks of our freedom to approach God with confidence. This confidence is not based on our own merits, but on the faithfulness of God and the completed work of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Today we are called to a renewed awareness of our responsibility as stewards of the mystery of Christ. This treasure entrusted to us, the truth of the gospel, the grace of salvation, the promise of eternal life, is not to be kept, but shared. May we be found faithful in our stewardship, that when the Lord returns, we can hear those blessed words, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful in a little, I will trust you with much. Come and share in the joy of your Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, today and always. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>